Okay, now a distribution of answers. So, I don't, uh, again, I'm going to give all of these the right answer. I'm going to give you all credit for all of these just because I've messed it up a little bit. But if I call this amount right here the binding energy, and I say that this PE value right here is the negative of the binding energy. So when they're at R0, the potential energy is the negative of the binding energy. That potential energy is the negative of the binding energy no matter what the kinetic energy is. It does not matter what the kinetic energy is. <coughs> the total energy can be anywhere at this point right here when they're this far apart. If this is the total energy, then the excess above the potential energy is kinetic energy. If the total energy is up here, then the excess above potential energy is that kinetic energy and it's a lot higher. It does not matter what the kinetic energy is. The potential energy depends on the distance between them. They were at a distance equal to the O2 bond length, so their potential energy was as small as it could get, no matter what the kinetic energy is. The potential energy tells you about the positions. The positions on both of these problems were the same, so your answer should have been the same, whatever your answer turned out to be. And I was looking for the negative of the binding energy. In other words, I was looking for C here in this one. Still the same potential energy. Potential energy just depends on the locations. It doesn't depend on the kinetic energy at all. You can have any kinetic energy for two atoms that are this far apart. Any questions? Yeah. Um, by smaller than you bond, do you mean smaller or a low smaller number? <laughs> well, what I meant was lower rather than higher, but it doesn't matter what I meant because the answer that I was looking for was it's exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if the question was asking something along the lines of would the atoms still be bonded then it would matter how much uh, kinetic energy was? If the question was along the lines of are the atoms bonded, it would absolutely matter. If the total energy was here so the kinetic was this big, they would be bonded because they go back and forth between those two points. If the total energy was here, so the kinetic energy was this big, they would be bonded because they would go back and forth between those two points, those two distances. If the total energy was up here somewhere, they would be unbonded. So that's, that is a different situation than what is the potential energy. In a sense, you can kind of tell that, in, in fact, I, I can finish this, if the atoms are this far apart, so they're exactly at their bond length, then their potential energy is the negative of the binding energy. If their kinetic energy is as big as the binding energy or bigger, so that energy is available, it's kinetic energy, then the bond's broken. If the molecules have as much kinetic energy as the binding energy, then they are not bound, is another way of saying it. Yeah. Is it implied on a question like this that they're at their equilibrium point? Um, it, it's implied, but only because you should understand that when it's at its bond length, its natural bond length, it is at the equilibrium, di the distance where there's no force. I'm not sure what, exactly what you mean by equilibrium because there's kinetic energy, so, so they're going to move around. So when you say equilibrium, I guess you mean the, the lowest potential energy. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, that's often called the equilibrium point because if you release it at that point not moving, then it'll just stay there. So yeah, that's the minimum potential energy is what you would generally call the equilibrium point and and so that is when they are at their bond length. And so the, the words about the distance equal to the bond length is supposed to tell you that they're at their equilibrium point. Yeah. Yeah. So the equation that you, or the relationship that you use for Ke is greater than binding energy, that's a broken bond, right? 
Yes. Because it only takes the binding energy added to break the bond. And if they already have that as kinetic energy, then, they're, then it's going to be broken. And is that the same thing as E total is, is greater than? That's the, that's, if I say that, if, if the kinetic energy up here is, here's the bond, here's the binding energy. If the kinetic energy right there is as big as the binding energy, then the total energy is going to be, the smallest total energy you can get where that happens is zero. So it's going to be bigger than or equal to zero. So saying that the kinetic energy is as big or bigger than the binding energy is the same thing as saying that E total is bigger than zero. Equal or bigger than zero. They're the same thing. Yeah. Um, so S1 is touching neg or the well, the bottom of the well is touching negative one, which I get. But if this is in units of diameter sigma, why is the bottom of the well not at one? It's like at 1.1. What's going on with that? Okay, so this is the picture. This is what I said that, that strictly speaking, the Leonard Jones potential where, where you have, oh, what is it? 4 epsilon sigma over R to the 12th minus sigma over R to the 6th. It's, it's something like that, the, the Leonard Jones potential. If you graph that, okay. you'll find out that it cross, that potential energy is zero. When sigma is equal to r, you can see what happens when sigma is equal to r. This is 1 to the 12th, which is 1. This is 1 to the 6th, which is 1. So this is 1 minus 1. Sigma is actually where it crosses through 0. And so this minimum is just a tiny bit higher than 0. You can do the calculus and figure this out. And I think it's something like the sixth root of 2 times sigma is the minimum. It's a, a, a number a tiny bit bigger than 1. It's like 1.1. 1 .1. Like theoretically, like when the, if I'm thinking of atoms <coughs> bumping into each other and then bonding, why is that? Because isn't the rate... Uh, it, it's really not a, it's not, th there isn't a, a, a theoretical reason. There's a theoretical reason for the 1 over r to the 6th. There's no good theoretical reason for 1 over r to the 12th. What you want is something that goes up really fast. And r to the 12th is r to the 6th squared. So it's a, it's a really fast rising thing, but it, it works with r to the 6th. <laughs> you could also have this thing going up exponentially. There, there are various ways of doing it. This one is easy to calculate with. And if it's easy to calculate with, and it's a pretty good way to think about it, then that's why people use it. There is no theoretical reason for the 1 over r to the 12th. It's just easier to calculate with. It has to be steep because you know atoms don't want to clunk together too, too far, too close. The 1 over r to 6, there is a theoretical reason for, but, but not for the other part. So, there, so this is, sigma is basically the size of an atom. But you know, atoms are, the, the, you use the word electron cloud. The reason you use the word electron cloud is that there's a diffuse boundary out at the edges. There is no size to an atom. There are, the electrons in an atom can literally be anywhere. It's just that they are less and less likely to be far away. So they are more likely to be in the shape of a uh, hydrogen atoms say, more likely to be in the shape of a circle, but, but the electrons in that cloud can be farther away sometimes. So a bo a it's just atoms are, are really kind of a, a fuzzy thing rather than a, a thing with actual size that you can measure correctly. <coughs> Okay, so, so now I want to take a step beyond potential energies and have you think about bond energies. Suppose we have a diatomic molecule, so that's like what we've been talking about, whose atom-atom interaction potential, so this thing right here, has a, 
a well depth of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 20th joules. So this is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 20th for that diatomic molecule. And a triatomic molecule, we're going to take these to be on an equilateral triangle. I'll just sketch that in a second. Whose atom-atom interaction potential has a well depth of 0.5 times 10 to the minus 20th, so they're both times 10 to the minus 20th. So one of the molecules is a diatomic molecule. So it looks like that when it's bonded. The other one is a triatomic molecule. And so, it, and I'm saying basically we're going to pretend that they're on the vertices of an equilateral triangle. So, so there's a picture of the triatomic molecule. My question for you, which molecule has a lower bond energy? <laughs> 